I want to bring in Ian Lee. He's an associate professor, Carleton University Sprott School of Business, and he joins me from Ottawa. Uh, Mr. Lee, are you surprised by this decision, or was the writing on the wall? The writing was on the wall. Um, I've been following this company. Full disclosure, I've used it from time to time over the years. Of course, I fly most of the time, but sometimes there's better connections, believe it or not, from Ottawa down to the, uh, the Trudeau Airport International. So I would take the, the Greyhound. And full disclosure, uh, a relative of mine was 35 years with Greyhound in uh, Northern Ontario and told me many, many stories about the declines in re ridership, uh, the increase in cost structures and the and the uh, closing of uh, small routes that uh, were not making money. But the writing was on the wall. Greyhound's uh, ridership was going down, down, down as they faced tougher uh, restrictions on transportation. Of course, carbon tax is being put on them. They're facing subsidized competition from Via Rail, which is really up their service quality standards. Mm -hmm. And, of course, from uh, municipal bus services that have extended out uh, and uh, subsidized uh, municipal uh, interprovincial or, or provincial uh, services. So the, the, the demand was down, the competition was up, and it was no longer economic. This is going to hugely impact a great number of people, though, who rely on Greyhound to get around, particularly interprovincially to some of the smaller towns or, you know, across Canadian borders. Um, what might be the impact, in your opinion? Um, it's it's not. Let's be very blunt and sort of differentiate this. It's not going to hurt the urban people, the 80 percent of Canadians that live in the big urban cities, the Torontos, the Vancouver's, Calgary's, Ottawa's, Montreal's. It is going to be devastating for those small communities that don't mm -hmm. have uh, air service, either did have it and don't have it because of COVID or are too small to even have it at all. It, it is going to be very difficult for people in these small communities because then you're either forced to have your own car if you have one or find somebody that has a car that can drive you. When this happened out west, because it did happen there first, even prior to COVID, um, what was put in place by private companies, small shuttle companies that, that made it um, viable and um, you know gave people in those small communities the ability to get to and from where they wanted to go? Well, there were there were multiple responses, as you can imagine, because markets are dynamic and adaptive. Um, so the, the the airlines, I'm talking the WestJets and the Air Canada's, started buying a lot of these little small, I call them putt putt planes, but mm -hmm. the technical term is an RJ, a regional jet, some that can only hold 10 or 15 people. And so if the market was big enough to fly uh, to get enough volume, they went into there. Uh, but then on top of that, you had um, uh, uh, regional government entities setting up uh, subsidized uh, bus service. And and then of course there were uh, private uh, you know almost regional taxi type services that that emerged. But it was it was it was uh, uh, catch as catch can. It wasn't there was no system uh, set up in place for these small uh, remote rural communities. Okay, we'll have to wait and see uh, how the government reacts and and uh, any further developments on this story. Appreciate your insight though, Ian. Thanks as always. Thanks very much. Okay, Ian Lee is an associate professor with the Sprott School of Business.